No snack city is complete without some kind of high protein option. Easy access to protein, especially at snack time, makes hitting your daily protein goals infinitely easier. These Nashville hot chicken nuggets are full of protein, flavorful, filling, and have a nice kick. Here's how you can make them. The first step I take is to prepare all of my vegetables. We're gonna use a jalapeno, green onions, and three medium sweet potatoes or 720 grams worth. That's a bit more than a pound and a half. And as long as you're close to that amount, you should be fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. Peel the sweet potatoes and then chop them into smaller pieces to make it easier for the food processor or the blender to process them down. Next, cut the stem off of one medium jalapeno that weighs about 30 grams, and then take four to five green onions, chop off the roots, and cut them into smaller pieces. You'll need about 50 grams worth here. We need to get these sweet potatoes down into a riced form. I do this using a food processor, but I've also used my blender and it works fine. You just need to stop every once in a while and push the potatoes back down into the blade. I throw in the jalapeno as well, then pop on the lid and get after it. As I've stated in the past, when I write recipes that are supposed to be spicy, I keep them on the milder side for the Jimmy Buffett fans, otherwise it might hurt their kulos. Once the potatoes have been minced up, I add in the green onions and continue the processing. Usually around this point, I'll realize trying to fit everything into the container at once won't actually save me time because now there is too much stuff inside and I have to take some of it out. Will I ever learn my lesson and just do it in two batches? Absolutely not. After everything has been minced, you can transfer it into a large bowl and get ready to make the ground chicken if you aren't buying it from the store. For this recipe, you're gonna need three pounds or 1.362 kilos of ground chicken. I use boneless skinless chicken breasts that I make into ground chicken using my food processor. Buying it from the store is the easier choice, but I always have trouble finding ground chicken. And when I do see it at the store, it always seems to be super watery. So I've started making my own. I throw the food processor blade and the chicken into the freezer for about an hour before I'm ready to go, and then I put it into the food processor for about 30 seconds until it is minced. These Kirkland brand chicken breasts say they have 4 grams of fat per 454 grams of chicken, which gives me a 99% lean ground chicken. A fattier grind will taste better, but I decided to go with the chicken breast to keep things more macro friendly. Once your chicken is ready to go, you can take that bowl with your sweet potato, jalapeno, and green onions and add to it the 3 pounds or 1.36 kilos of ground chicken. Add to it three beaten eggs, half a cup or 60 grams of oat flour, two tablespoons or 30 grams of oil, three tablespoons or 45 grams of hot sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of minced garlic, 1.5 tablespoons or nine grams of paprika, one tablespoon or six grams each of onion powder, chili powder, and cayenne pepper, one and a half tablespoons or 18 grams of brown sugar, two teaspoons or 12 grams of salt, and mix that with your hands together until everything has been well incorporated. I would say these nuggets are about a three out of 10 on the spicy scale. It's very easy to add more spice if you prefer that, but taking it away is a bit trickier. So if you want these puppies to be hot, consider using a different kind of pepper other than the jalapeno or a spicier hot sauce. Next, get out a large sheet pan and spray it with oil to help prevent any stickage. I use a standard size cookie scoop to help form the nuggets into a uniform size. It also makes it way easier to form them into shape when they are already in ball form. Divide the scoops onto a sheet pan with even spacing throughout to not overcrowd the pan. To be honest with you, half the time I make these I fit as many as I can on the pan because I would rather do less batches than having them properly cooked and waiting longer for them to finish. I'm about speed. But if I did it that way, I'd get way too many comments saying, that pan is so overcrowded, and I don't wanna deal with that, so pretend I always do it this way and I never take any shortcuts. Then you can press the balls in a nugget shape of about one fourth of an inch to a half an inch in thickness. You don't wanna to go too thin for a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes them more prone to sticking, and two, they'll be easier to overcook. Dipping your fingers in a bit of water before pressing them down can help to keep the meat off of the tips of your fingers. After you've got them all shaped up, you can bake them at 400 Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for 12 minutes, flipping after the eight minute mark. While the first pan is cooking, you can start filling up another sheet pan with the nuggets to make things move faster. Cooking two pans at one time leads to less browning on the pan that sits on the top rack, as this is likely a result of too much steam. But if that doesn't bother you, place them both in the oven together. Cracking the door of the oven a bit may help to allow some of the steam to release and promote better cooking, but I have never actually tried doing that with this particular recipe. If you use the air fryer to reheat the nuggets, you can usually get some good color on them upon reheating. As the nuggets are coming out of the oven, place them onto a wire-lined sheet pan to cool and refill your sheet pans with the raw nuggets to continue the cooking process. Keep repeating these steps until all of your meat mixture is used up. For reference, I got 90 nuggets from this recipe. As the nuggets finish cooking and cool, I consolidate them all onto one sheet pan to make it easier to fit inside of the freezer. As with all of my snacks that I vacuum seal, I flash freeze them first so that they are able to freeze individually and create ice crystals around the surface of each piece. Flash freezing in a home kitchen has a different definition than commercially. Some people who watch these videos get real worked up when I call this flash freezing. And to you people, let's settle down a bit, huh? Google flash freezing in a home kitchen and you'll find that I didn't make up the term, it's a different process that has the same name. 
into the freezer they go until they are frozen solid, and then a few hours later you can place them into their bags to be stored in Snack City for the long run. The flash freezing step is what allows the nuggets to easily break apart into individual pieces. This is super important because otherwise they can all freeze together in one big clump and it will become nearly impossible to just grab a couple at a time for a snack. You would have to thaw the entire bag until they broke apart, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of building your own snack city in the freezer. I never used to vacuum seal any of my snacks and I would just put them into regular Ziploc bags. This does work out fine if you remove as much air as possible each time you open and close the bags, but you will be much more prone to developing freezer burn. I vacuum seal everything these days, and I highly recommend you do the same if you plan on building Snack City in your own freezer. To reheat the nuggets, I go straight from the freezer into the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let them go for about 3-5 to five minutes. If you use something as lean as chicken breast to make the nuggets, you need to be careful during the initial cooking process as well as reheating that you don't overcook them, otherwise they will become dry. If you use chicken thighs, that problem isn't as big of an issue. If you don't have an air fryer, you can also reheat in the microwave. From this recipe, I got 90 nuggets, which makes each nugget about 32 calories and 3.6 grams of protein. I don't personally count calories or macros in my daily life, but I do try to keep an eye on my protein intake. If I know I haven't had much protein one day, I'll dig into Snack City and pull out something like these nuggets to give me a quick boost without having to cook anything. Prepping my snacks, in addition to my meals, helps make meal prep more fun because it gives you variation and options. The written version of the recipe for these Nashville hot chicken nuggets is published on my website and is linked in the description below. If you haven't started building your own Snack City, this is the perfect recipe to start with. See you next week.